One man's trash is another man's treasure. Did you know that a bottle top could make road pavements? This is Founders Connect Africa. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Yes, this is uh, Jijanga. Uh -huh. We are the change makers. Change makers. The really proud ones. Very yeah. proud change makers. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the, we, as a, as I said, uh, this is yeah. the team. Yeah. So that's David, genius uh, mechanical engineer. That's yeah. Kim. Yeah. Uh, he's the industrial uh, engineer in terms of the production line. Mm -hmm. And that's Cheng. Yeah. He's also a mechanical engineer and a really a heavy expert as far as the machinery process is concerned. Is concerned yes. And uh, I, I just tag along. <laughs> <laughs> I just tag along. Yeah. That's what I do. Thank you so much for having us here at Jijenge. Now mm -hmm. to a lot of machines, yeah. Um, just tell us, how did um, Jijenge start? So Jijenge started uh, with a dream of four people. Uh, me and uh, a team of uh, three very brilliant engineers. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea was how do we find the most sustainable solution to plastic waste pollution and given a solution that is practical. The best way we saw that we could do a practical solution was to directly impact the basic needs. And in this case, housing is one of the basic needs. So that is literally the dream we had. How do you use one problem, plastic waste pollution, to solve another problem of building or, or uh, alternative uh, affordable building products. Okay. So what do you produce here? So here in Jijenge Makers, we produce uh, alternative building products. Our current production line is pavers, which are, uh, which, uh, are used for sidewalks, footpaths and driveways that are made from waste plastic. Or rather, waste plastic is a component. How long have you been in this business? So in terms of operation, we have uh, been uh, in two years, two years in operation. Um, this year, in fact, we launched our product officially in the market. Um, but in terms of uh, research and development, uh, this will be our like fourth year. Yes, because before we even bring the product in the market, we have a lot of a series of research and developments just from machines all the way to the product itself. Tell me, why did you get these machines? They look very heavy. Yes, yes. Um, so this is a pure, pure, beautiful work of art yes. by our team, Jijenge team, um, the team of uh, four brilliant engineers. Of course, we had uh, uh, help. Because as you can see, this thing is almost two, three tons, I think. Yeah. So you need the uh, machinery <laughs> and a few more hands uh -huh. to set it up. Yeah. But the, the, from everything from the design to the execution to the fabrication, we did it uh, as a team. That's because uh, we, we, we searched, we really scoured the internet to find the machines that could give us what we wanted. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't get exactly what we wanted. We got something close, but not exactly what we wanted. Mm. So we decided, you know what? If the mountain cannot, if Mohammed does not go to the mountain, could. let's bring the mountain to yes. Mohammed. Wow! So, so you literally built your, your own machines from this. Yes. Wow! So um, you have been in business for say two to three years. Um, how has it been? Do you have a lot of customers? How, how do you did you start looking for? your own customers for this? Yes, so um, as earlier stated, this was our official uh, first year of uh, launch in the market. Yes. And we're really, really fortunate and really happy that uh, the, the reception, the reception has been amazing, even despite the COVID um, situation, uh, especially the impact that it has had in the economy. Um, in terms of the recep reception in the market, we are really getting increase in, um, in orders. In fact, we need to start working on our capacity. Mm. We need to start ramping it up or rather thinking of ramping mm. it up. Mm. So. What has been your challenges? So, as uh, I stated uh, earlier, first of all, uh, being a relatively small team, we have to really get like everyone doing everything, like all hands on deck. So if we can like uh, get more skilled, um, uh, youths, targeting youths. That doesn't mean if you don't have the skill, you cannot do it. We can always upskill you. That's the first thing. The second thing is um, um, we, before we were not uh, certified by the Kenya Bureau of Standards. So, and for you to bring a product in the market, you have to be certified. So, but right now, as we speak, we are really fu we are fully certified uh, from by the Kenya Bureau of Standards. What is next for you? Um, so for for our next thing, our next step is uh, we're targeting bigger projects. Um, hopefully, going uh, for the likes of the government and uh, other big uh, construction corporations to um, to you, for the, for them to be able to be aware and also for them to try and use a product that is alternative 
uh, in the space and also to diversify our product. Right now we just have one per pavers, the rectangle ones, but we also now looking to diversify not to just in the shapes, but also in other building products okay. generally. So this is an example yeah. of, of what we do. This is uh, about 40 mm paver. Um, the, so the, there are different standards in the pavers. The difference is the thickness. Mm. So depending on where you're going to put it, it determines the size. So like this one, the small one is essentially for compounds, foot bridge, foot parts, and where there's like not that heavy, mm. heavy um, weight. And then there's a bigger one, which is uh, the medium duty. That one is somewhere where you have like vehicles, um, not relatively heavy machinery, but just generally vehicles, lorries and stuff. And then you have a bigger one where you have like trailers and the likes that can sustain the weight. And yes. How many do you do this in a, in in a day? day? So right now we are running a, a 500 uh, brick uh, a shift. Uh, per day. Currently we're just running one shift but we have the capacity of running two shifts so essentially to be anything between 1,000 to 1,200. Every day. day. Yes. Every day. Yes. Wow. Interesting. Um, so what differentiates you from other people? Okay, other from people? the competition? Yes. Okay, so just starting with the product itself, um, uh, uh, from the test we've run uh, in partnership with the Kenya Bureau of Standards, this brick holds three times the weight of concrete. So, for example, like the same, the exact same size of concrete will carry anything between 40 to 50 um, newton per millimeter uh, weight. That's the compression strength. This one carries 140. So it's almost three times the, the, the impact. Uh, that's the first one. The other one is we have the capacity of uh, making as many color variations as the customer wants. Our biggest asset is we have the ability to customize based on the cu customer's input. So right now we have, uh, like uh, the last uh, site we did, we had uh, a series of normal, the gray, the gray color, and then a series of patterns with different colors. And we were able to execute it, I'll send you the material, you see. But it was, it was because of the material we were able to use, it's, that's easily achievable. The other thing is, uh, as you can feel, this brick is, it feels heavy, yeah, but it's relatively it's lighter. Or if you compare with the concrete, yeah. it's almost half the weight. Oh. So therefore, you are able to transport more mm -hmm. for, le for less cost. Yeah. So essentially, if you are to transport uh, maybe a hundred of these, you would need more for con more like a bigger truck for concrete as compared to this one. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh -huh. yeah. And the last one, unbreakable. Unbreakable. Yes. <laughs> Good stuff. Let's talk about the industry at large. Um, waste management solutions. Um, what are the um, issues surrounding the industry that you'd like uh, probably um, a lot of regulation or you see opportunities for people who would definitely want to enter into this business? Yeah, um, for the waste management system, we are yet to be like fully uh, having uh, structurized, for the lack of a better word. There is no structure, so you quite, you quite don't know. It's not there, it's not that it's not there, it's just not uh, well established. Um, but with that said and done, there are numerous opportunities. Um, because right now, as you speak, the government has the push to put um, what we call a, a production pro a responsibility, a producer responsibility. That is where, for every company that produces any product in the market, you have to figure out or you have to think what is the re re reuse and the recycle element of the product after consumption by the consumer. So that is one that provide that uh, opens up a huge space where many can come on board and uh, and come and come and see what can be put into the into that space because right now as we speak we really need to start thinking about that. Yes, I know culturally as Kenyans and Africans, environment is the last thing we ever think of, and and, and that I don't, I don't I don't blame them because people have more more urgent issues. For example, you not think of environment when you're hungry. But now, from just a holistic point of view, we need to start thinking of how do we create a cyclic economy. And this is the one way, because once you finish, uh, once the producer packages your soft drink in that container, you finish using it, you take it back to the recycler, the recycler recycles it, and what he cannot uh, process again, we take that and we bring it to the paving block. And, that, and this, the beauty about this brick also is we can, we can process it again. So numerous opportunities lie there. One was waste is another one's opportunity. Yeah, yeah, did you really enjoy um, environment when you were young, or how did you love to be in this business? Uh, so the idea, first of all, I got uh, inspired by other people doing uh, similar sp things in, in different places. That was really impactful. Uh, the other thing is, I, I get the feeling we can do more just 
other than just complain, for the lack of a better word. And like, this was just me showing that, yes, other than me sitting down and complaining, why don't I do something? So that when I tell you, hey, you should sort your bottles, uh, once you finish uh, drinking your sodas, you can just put them aside in, in a gunia. We can talk gunia pokando. That that it, it will it will make you like you you listen to me because I can show you how to do yeah. to do that. Okay. Uh, one of the last questions: How much did you invest in this business? Ah. <laughs> ah. Let's just say it's uh, it's quite it's quite some yeah. quite some amount. Yeah. Let, let's just say. So, so do you had you saved up or what? Had so it's a combination of both. So the the prototype the prototype of course we I used the the savings yeah. and um, a lot of uh, from family and and friends. Yeah. But to set up such a, an entity, you will need some heavy investment, and uh, of course, we got uh, assistance from that. You got, you got an investor from that. Yes. How did you do that? How did you get it? Um. So, as I said, we we are a team of uh, four four really brilliant people. So I, t I told my team members uh, that's uh, Ocheng, David, and Kim. So we told them if we can figure out uh, how to do just one brick, we can know how to make a thousand. So we had to know how to make just the first one. And so once we got the first one, then we went around talking to different people saying, we can do this, we just need machine to replicate this maybe 500 times or 1,000 times a day. So with that, the conversation was a bit easy because we had something. Mm. You were showing a product. Yes, you had, it, was not, it was not the best, but it proved a concept, yes. Okay, interesting. How many people did you talk to? Ah, <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. How uh, many doors did you dog? Oh yeah. Um, on top of my head, uh, there are those who they don't. They just don't even give you time. Like you just come in and they just say no. Yeah. Uh, those ones are enough. But the ones who gave me even just door to open, just to hear, and then they, they give me the privilege of saying no, yeah. or rather they, they I, I, uh, the other way around, mm. was almost fifty-two. Those ones are the ones I actually sat down and uh, got no. So I successfully got fifty-two no's. Yes. Over a period of almost uh, eight months. Wow! And every that's... day. What drove you every single day to go for this? Um, first of all, uh, um, like for example, uh, the, the 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 team really and I and I really emphasize on the team because the team is human is every, human beings are everything. So I have a really strong, capable team, and they can really do wonders. Like they can do magic. They just need an opportunity. So that was a fuel. I was like, okay, I know we can do that. We can do a lot. We can do wonders. We just need someone. We just need one person to say yes. Just one person. And then the rest will fall in line. So that was the fuel. Okay. What would be your advice to uh, young people who are probably thinking about um, getting into this kind of space or people who are planning to create and they give up on the last, the last minute, they don't have that zeal? to go for 52 meetings and being told no? Um, so the, 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 the zeal or very, very fluctuates. There are times you have like, you're like, yes, I will do it. There are days you're like, hey, my friend, today I, I, I just give up, yeah. I give up. Yeah. But like you have to have something that, the why, the, I know a lot of people say why and it sounds a bit cliche, but you have to be true to your why. Like you have to say, okay, you go, why did I do this? You answer, and then why did I do that? And then you go to the really core why as to why you're doing that. Because every time you go and you get all those notes, you can always fall back to your why. Thank you. Aye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and uh, Karibu. Yes, Aye. you can go around now. Sawa, sawa. So the first process, yeah. so these are the basics uh, in terms of what you need. Yeah. So this is sand. So the sand, the, we mix it together with uh, plastic. So this is uh, crushed plastic. Oh, so you crush the plastic? Yes, so because essentially for the plastic and the sand to mix, they have to be almost at the same size. So you, here you mix the sand, the plastic, and the color pigment. Okay. Yes. So for, like for example, the production right now, we're doing a, a red color pigment. Okay. So the next stage is after they have mixed homogeneously, you put them in, uh, you feed it in, in this machine. Uh, this is called an, an extruder. Extruder? Yes, okay. extruder. So what essentially it does, it takes the plastic and mixes it with sand at 
at very high temperatures. Okay. So it can go anything between uh, almost, that right now we have 367 yeah. degrees centigrade. Yeah. So if uh, a human being was to enter here, uh, <laughs> that will disintegrate faster than you can say disintegrate. <laughs> so yeah, you can feed it. Yeah. Yeah. So you feed it there. So it's mixing them while heating them together. So this is what this is what comes out. Yes. So the next stage of the process is here. So this is called a hydraulic press. Yeah. yeah. So as it's as the name suggests, yeah. it presses things. Yeah. So this is called a mold. Yeah. Uh, depending on size, you see right now we are making a rectangular one. Yeah. Once again, uh, this all this. We, we, we did it ourselves. Yeah. And then as you notice, the, the temperature is very high. Yeah. So we have to bring it down. So Ooh. this is a cooling system. The next thing is pressing. So this one is almost about 100 to 200 metric tons. So once it fully, fully uh, presses it, yeah. you let it uh, cool for like a few minutes. Yeah. It can be seconds, it can be minutes, depending on uh, how, how much you want to produce yeah. that big. But essentially that's it. So, the, like, once it stops, wow. you can let it cool. So the next stage, essentially, ni once they cool, mm. zina come out with ukunje. Uh, ukundani mm. bado ija poa. Ukunje ndo imepoa. So ukunje imepoa just uh, enough for you to remove. Okay. No, no. <laughs> but haija poa kabisa. Yeah. Ime just enough for you to kutoa. Sasa, ikisha atoka hivyo. The next step ni uneka kwa, sorry, kwa cooling, ina ita cooling bath, which is just maja kawaida. Uneka kwa, kwa cooling bath. Sasa hapo ito itendelea kufina nini? Kupua. Eh, so it, it will continue cooling as you continue. And then uh, the next stage kisha atawa cooling, sasa ni tunafanya finishing. Unaona kama sayi kuna hizo overflows. Yeah.